so two or so weeks ago i was doing a, a demonstration for some students of game development they were first semester students so pretty new to the whole 3d scene part of this demonstration was to show the basics of concept and a character using blender sculpt tools and then take it slightly more advanced where we had to take concepts from the early sorry my friend's dog is trying to chew through the cable back off thing is feral <laughs> sorry about that uh where was i yeah we were taking concept ideas from the concept art from the early um doom games and take some of the helmet designs and come up with something of our own but one issue that popped up a lot was it, because these students were so new none of them had very strong sculpting abilities so one question that kind of came up a lot was is it ever possible for someone who's brand new into game development or character design or or 3d design in general to get any of those kind of really sharp highly detailed results that triple a games would have for instance without being particularly good at sculpting to start with so that being a bit of an issue we decided to change up the, the demonstration a little bit instead of relying on the sculpting i decided to show them a similar way of getting the results that we needed using polymodeling techniques or most of this would be very fundamental basic stuff that pretty much any beginner would know at this stage so basically using edge extraction techniques we made a very basic very very basic helmet and then using the geometry that was on that helmet we started to kind of duplicate pieces off and then we kind of went on a tangent with those and when i say tangent what i mean is we were just using the fundamental things that we've learned up until this point very basic stuff like inset extrude bevel and using the knife tool to cut angle shapes because it's a sci-fi team you know you're going to want the sci-fi look to it the knife tool is great for cutting these well any shape you want really and then we could use something like a solidify modifier or subdivision surface modifier and mirror then on both sides and instead of trying to sculpt those details we were able to kind of use those separate objects as those details rather than sculpt them now i think a, a fair point to note is that because you're doing it this way you might end up with hundreds of objects very small little bits so we can get a bit messy but by the time you bake everything down it's it's not that it's not a big problem you can almost join everything together anyway into one object once you get the details there and looking right you can just join them so you're not tripping over loose bits everywhere so again i just thought i'd crunch down that um session recording and just put it up here in case somebody might find it useful again i'll just leave you with a time lapse and just like i know it's, kind of, it's sped up very fast i think the whole session was like six hours compressed down into 10 minutes or something but just notice everything i'm doing is extracting geometry and then i'm usually cutting it or i'll add some subdivision or extract an edge and i'm building more geometry from that rather than pumping everything up to a very high resolution mesh and then trying to fine sculpt all that in it's just i personally found it a lot more enjoyable it's a lot cleaner and the students who are brand new to 3d modeling had no issue with getting some pretty good results from it as well so for anybody who's kind of struggling with you know the, the sculpting side of, of of this kind of work i urge you to just give this a go worst case scenario it's not for you you can go back to studying your your sculpting and it all has to be done anyway it's all part of the pipeline but um I'm, I'm surprised with how this held up with students who are brand new to the course and they really enjoyed it and they had some very impressive work from it so i'll just leave you with the rest of this and enjoy it or get some notes from it if you will one thing i'll, I'll just urge you though just every time something happens every time i'm making a change just look at the same operations i'm doing it's almost the same every single time i will extrude an edge i'll cut it with a knife i'll give it a solidify modifier then i'll start using some um supporting edge loops to sharpen the edges and then i will probably 
just mirror it to the opposite side to kind of get the symmetry going. Very simple, very straightforward. And the great thing about it, because this is technically considered a high definition mesh, you don't really need to worry about, you'll notice in some areas I have end guns all over the place. I think there was nearly 100 end guns in this by the time we checked it at the end. But none of it mattered because it wasn't given any pinch anomalies. So we just baked the details out of it and the end guns were, were, were not a problem anymore. So yeah, I'll just leave this with you. Hopefully somebody can learn something from it. And if you're new to this kind of work, I'll urge you, just give it a go. It might make your your life a little easier. And again, if people want a more thorough demonstration about what I'm talking about or what I'm doing here, I'll get around to it. Leave a comment saying that you'd like to know more about it and I'll, I'll plan a video for it in the future. So, uh, yeah, I guess I'll catch you guys in the next. Take care.